Hi, everyone. The long-awaited uh, strategic Bitcoin reserve bill is out. Senator Cynthia Lummis uh, published it yesterday, and uh, it's a wonderful game changer. I've read the whole thing, and I want to share uh, key points and some ideas and extra analysis with you. Uh, so the act, uh, the main thing it does is it establishes a procedure and a program uh, that the U.S. will buy uh, 1 million Bitcoin and send it to cold storage uh, that will be properly secured and uh, audited. Uh, the purpose for that is to establish the United States as the leader of uh, the, this new financial world and uh, up to 5% share in the world's scarcest asset that will help support the dollar and reduce the debt and so on and so forth. So I pre prepared a presentation to go over the details of it um, with quotes and numbers and extra analyses. So let's take a look. Okay, so the act is called the Bitcoin Act of 2024. Uh, by Cynthia Lummis. Hopefully you all at this point know the great work that she's doing. She's one of, probably one of the most pro-Bitcoin senators right now in the U.S. Congress. And uh, the act has a very long name. The words are specifically chosen so that the short form becomes Bitcoin. So it is, it is uh, boosting innovation, technology, and competitiveness through optimized investment nationwide act. Uh, it was uh, proposed uh, yesterday. So essentially, uh, you know, the ideas that are uh, evident from the naming is innovation, competitiveness, the need for leadership, and the need for a game-changing investment by the United States. The logic of the bill is, as, as the senator herself mentions, is that Bitcoin is transforming not only our country, but the world, and becoming the first developed nation to use Bitcoin as a savings technology secures our position as a global leader in financial innovation. This is our Louisiana purchase moment that will help us reach the next financial frontier. So um, a couple of things uh, are, are uh, interesting here. Uh, she realizes the major change that Bitcoin is causing, creating around the world. And she wants the U.S. to be the leader in this technology. And uh, um, she can't say we want to be the first nation because El Salvador is the first and they front ran the United States. But they can be the first developed nation to use Bitcoin. And uh, you can also imagine once the United States becomes the first uh, nation who uh, establishes a, a, a strategic reserve uh, for Bitcoin, uh, that essentially corners all their competitors, Russia, China, and uh, pretty much everyone else to also adopt it and, and not fall behind by a meaningful uh, amount. So the bill uh, once uh, aimed for the U.S. to hold 1 million coins over five years. So that's going to be 200,000 coins a year. Uh, that's the uh, kind of a, a possible schedule. Um, and the reason for choosing 1 million coins is that this mimics the amount of gold that the United States has. I pulled the gold holding data here. And depending on the year that you're looking at, United States has about 4% of the world's gold reserves. By far the biggest country on that metric. The next biggest one is Germany with 1.6%, um, about a third. And uh, the next one is, the next ones are France and Italy, and then Russia and China holding about a little bit more than 1% each. Uh, quick point, why would central banks hold uh, gold at all? Essentially, because uh, fiat currencies are volatile and they are printed by the central banks and they um, change, they, 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 they lose value quite a bit, but they also have quite some fluctuation against each other, but also individually according to geopolitical issues and tensions and economic growth and different interest rate differentials and, uh, you know, trading behavior and many other things. Central banks, because they want to be in control, control, they would establish a diversified portfolio of assets that stores their national value. And then whenever their currency is, for example, losing a lot of value, they can sell some of those assets and purchase their own currency. And that way kind of prevent the fluctuation in the currency from hurting their economy. 
um, and uh, create uh, some level of uh, stability. Bitcoin is just going to be one of these assets, and there are, there are many uh, many central banks hold uh, you know government bonds, just primarily the U.S. bonds, uh, each other's currencies, uh, some commodities like oil and gold, obviously, and finally Bitcoin is going to be joining the club. Uh, the technology that the senator proposes is a is a geographically distributed cold storage, essentially a multi-sig address that's distributed geographically, uh, held by probably different institutions or different parts of the uh, U.S. Treasury. Uh, she mentions interestingly the the possibility of forks and what's gonna um, happen to the coins that they might acquire if a fork happens. Um, and then interestingly, she mentions there will be a proof of reserve system that will provide cryptographic proof of the holdings. The whole thing is going to be managed by the treasury. So the Janet Yellen of the future will manage that. And the funds will primarily come from the Federal Reserve. So the Jay Powell of the future will pay for that. But I'll explain how in a, in a few slides. Uh, another thing that's mentioned is uh, Senator... Uh, aptly emphasizes the importance of individual financial freedoms and the establishments of this reserve shall not inf infringe upon individuals' rights to self-custody. So um, a couple things from the bill itself. We mentioned 200,000 purchases per year, but it, very importantly, the actual bill reads purchases no more than 200,000. Essentially, that means that's our goal, but if we can't we won't. And they mentioned that we will be strategic by in our purchases. So the U.S. Treasury will determine when to buy. So they may, to some extent, want to time the market. When the prices drop, they'll probably purchase more. And that was also interesting. The minimum holding period is 20 years, which is awesome. So they are really thinking long term here. And no Bitcoin will be sold, swapped, auctioned, encumbered, or otherwise disposed of for any purposes other than retiring the outstanding federal debt. So they only pay debt or they just keep it. Okay, how much of a debt do we have? About 30, uh, $35 trillion overall, but a lot of that debt is, is intergovernmental. So it's held by other parts of the government. If you take that out, we are left with just the public portion of uh, um, the debt, uh, essentially the portion that's held by public. And that's about 100% of the GDP, which is $26 trillion how much this Bitcoin reserve can help with that. Let's take a look at that. If they're going to buy 1 million Bitcoin and uh, potentially if you want to offset all of the 25 trillion, uh, they must have made 25 millions uh, of dollars per Bitcoin. And then um, that uh, will only happen if the price of Bitcoin reaches, you know, 25 or 30 million, depending on when they, uh, with the prices that they acquire them. But uh, at that range, which is, you know, something that's possible within the, if it had a few decades, uh, once the price reaches that range, uh, all of the today's debt will be able to be paid. Of course, by that time, the debt is probably doubled. So add a few extra years to the whole analysis. But a random number and within, you know, by 2050, uh, um, uh, all of this is uh, payable if Bitcoin keeps growing according to the existing power law trend. And then uh, if, if using the uh, Congressional Budget Office, uh, the estimation that they've put out by 2050, the debt is going to be 50 trillion. So it's going to be it doubled. And that will add about another decade to our analysis. So um, by 2058, uh, uh, the value, the profit that the government makes over all of this Bitcoin is going to offset the whole debt. Which is, a, which is an interesting idea, even if it doesn't pay the whole thing, it's, it will make it change, but they have to keep it for quite some time. Okay, another point in the bill is that uh, there will be consolidation of government holdings, which basically says, you know, all the other coins that are held by other parts of the government will be aggregated and consolidated under this whole, uh, this one uh, reserve. Uh, and that includes coins held by U.S. Marshall Service, uh, which has the uh, Silk Road coins. And so this bill essentially prevents uh, 
uh, removes their ability to, to sell these at uh, according to their own plans. So how will they find the money for this? Um, they will make changes to the Federal Reserve Act. Actually, what happens right now is whenever the Fed makes some money, uh, they call it a surplus fund. And then that surplus uh, accumulates. And when that um, surpasses $6.8 billion, the Fed has to send it over to the Treasury. Remember, the Fed is a nonprofit organization. So whatever they make uh, belongs to the US government. So they have to send it over, transfer it to the Treasury. But uh, they can't do it you know, every day. So there's a threshold. The bill will drop that threshold from 6.8 to 2.4. So the so the Fed will have to send funds much more frequently to the Treasury, and those funds will be used to purchase Bitcoin. But is there enough? Does the Fed make any money? Uh, so the Fed does make money because they have purchased a lot of government bonds in the QE program. And those bonds have coupons, and the Fed is essentially a huge trader, and they make money off of those trades. Uh, for example, if they bond buy bonds and the bonds appreciate later, that provides another source of uh, surplus for the Fed. Uh, and and whatever money they make, they have to send it to the Treasury. And if you look at the data, um, the surplus funds that the Fed has had has been very substantial. Uh, in the past, so since uh, you know from 2011 to uh, 2022, they've been consistently sending five to ten billion dollars to the treasury, and this has stopped uh, since 2022 because they hiked. Uh, essentially, the Fed is accumulating losses, and the reason for that is they hiked the rate, and the, and that caused the Fed's bond holdings to drop significantly, and and. Uh, uh, go into the negative territory. So they've been accumulating debt. This chart shows it a lot better. They now have $140 billion of losses accrued, but this can change rather quickly in the same manner that it accumulated. If the Fed drops the rate, that will increase the value of the bond holdings that they have. So that will offset some of this loss. But also um, if there is... a uh, any economic slowdown, which is uh, not improbable, uh, they will resume uh, stimulation of the economy and, and, and purchases of bonds that will add to their sources of income. And this uh, bill, this whole bill actually introduces an interesting dynamic where uh, whenever the Fed goes into the stimulus mode and the economy is uh, not doing well, and Bitcoin is probably going to be uh, sold at that point and 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 uh, performing weekly. Uh, the Fed will have surplus funds, and then those funds will be used to purchase Bitcoin. So essentially, the U.S. government becomes a floor a maker for Bitcoin. And whenever the economy is very weak, and whenever the Bitcoin market is weak, they will step in and and buy more. So that's going to be very interesting, reducing the volatility. Uh, so that's that's essentially uh, a quick uh, synopsis of the bill and what it uh, wants to do. If you want to support the senator, one of the best things you can do is just call the number uh, uh, that I have here, the Washington, D.C. office, and you can just thank her. This is going to take 30 seconds. Uh, one of the staffers will pick up the phone and you can, um, you know, tell uh, the senator that you uh, support the bill. And this is uh, very simple and it's going to have an effect. It's going to be turned into data that will be later used to determine how much of the uh, the constituency is supporting this bill. And uh, so it's important to record your opinion. All right, guys, that's all I have. Thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Tusina underline 21st. And if you found value in this video, please do share it with others. If you're watching it on YouTube, like and subscribe. If you're watching it on Twitter, I'm still a Twitter guy, not X. Uh, repost, like, comment. I read almost all the comments and response. So looking forward to your thoughts. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video.